Hello everyone online. I'm Gabe. I'm coming to you live from AWS reInvent here in Las Vegas. And today we're doing a bunch of interviews with experts in the fields of machine learning and the intersection with healthcare. And I'm here right now with Davide. Davide, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Davide Valeriani and I'm a postdoc at Massa Engineer in Boston and uh, I work on uh, brain imaging and machine learning together to make uh, automatic tools for uh, diagnosis of speech disorders. Uh, so what kind of speech disorders? What do you mean when you say that? So we, uh, our lab works on many different types of disorder, mainly dystonia, but also other types of uh, disorder. Dystonia being a speech disorder that affects uh, your ability to speak and cre creates tremors in your muscles uh, in the larynge, and uh, that makes uh, you not speak properly, basically. And what we are investigating is to see whether there is there are some abnormalities in the brain, functional and structural, that generates this. Okay. And how are you doing this research? Uh, what What's the machine learning angle on this? So uh, we use neuroscience to actually uh, inform us about what are the abnormalities there, and then we use machine learning tools to transform these features, these uh, um, information that we gather from neuroscience yeah. into a diagnosis. So we use uh, uh, mainly uh, support vector machines, but now we are turning towards deep neural networks, 3D convolutional neural networks mainly. Cool, let's, let's unpack that a bit because I think this, this stuff is really neat. Uh, so in old world machine learning, it was up to the humans to figure out what are the relevant features and then we would just have the machines do inference on that. Yeah. Right? These days with deep learning it's, hey, we don't know what the features are or we're not able to extract those features. Tell me what So that. exactly, tell me, you figure out what's important yeah. and, and make, make a model that way. Yeah, and we are really trying to merge the two words. So we are trying to say like what has um, so if we use a neurologist or a neurosurgeon to tell us like uh, what are the abnormalities usually on this type of people uh, and then use a the machine learning components to predict based on those, we can also use 3D Compness to have as input like a scan coming from an MRI scanner yep. uh, with minor preprocessing down there and tell us like look here and look here to uh, find abnormalities and then we can merge the two ideas together for a real AI and uh, human collaboration to make automatic diagnosis of these disorders. That's really cool. And so this kind of work obviously needs a large amount of computational power. And I assume that you're leveraging a lot of what AWS has to offer here. Yeah. Uh, how is AWS helping you with machine learning? So we mainly use like uh, EC2 instance to actually train our deep learning algorithms. With, without AWS, we would take ages to do that. Even though like in our case, like. The data set we are talking about is quite limited because it's a rare disorder and uh, we don't simply have enough patients there to train like a, a very complex neural network. So we are actually putting into place like strategies to augment the data and uh, we use AWS basically to try all of our models there yep. and um, uh, once we train that, then we can make that portable into something that could be uh, developed to, for um, neurologists to help them and support them in diagnosis. Cool, I understand that uh, AWS also gives uh, machine learning research grants or awards, uh, maybe in the form of credits or other things. Uh, have you been a recipient of such a thing? Yeah, my lab has been, Great. and so we have like a lot of credit on that, nice. thanks to AWS, Great. and we are using that so much to actually train our models every day. Cool, and maybe you can also just sum up and, and say, why is it important to be doing this research with AI? Yeah, because humans are not generally uh, enough for this type of diagnosis. So diagnosis is generally very subjective to the uh, neurologist doing that. Um, we need the AI to provide us a new perspective on where to look at when uh, uh, doing diagnosis. So I really believe that the future will be like a real collaboration between AI and humans to make better and objective diagnosis and solve issues of many different people. Right, I think that's a good way to, to put it in summary is, we're not trying to replace doctors with computers. No. Uh, yeah. it, but we're, you want to turn this into another signal for the doctor to look at in a more holistic diagnosis. Right? Yeah, we are, we are creating like artificial collaborators to doctors to make diagnosis. Right, exactly. So you can have a second opinion, it just might not be from a human. Exactly, yes. That's really cool. Well, thanks so much for coming today to share this Thank with us. Thank you very much. Uh, and it was really fun talking with you. Likewise. Thank you. Cool.